Okay, so welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be repurposing this here RM all in one PC that you can see in front of me. This is basically a PC and monitor case in one. You've got a, a LCD screen here, and on the back of it, the motherboard goes in. You get these front panel connectors and stuff. There's also a disk drive on the side there, which I'll show you in a moment. But basically, these were originally aimed at schools and places like that because you'd have the whole thing in one and you just have to plug in power, a mouse and a keyboard and away you go. Now this has got some damage on it, which uh, you can see here, there's scuffs and marks in the plastic. Uh, I can't really get it to focus because of this glossy surface, but there's a few scratches and scuffs on the screen. So it's not really worth me selling it anymore, which the original idea was to upgrade it and sell it as a system. So what I'm going to do now instead, I mean I've had this hanging around for a few years now, the hardware's probably pretty dated in it. I don't remember what the heck is actually in it. But I'm going to be putting this stuff here in. Although this is quite dated, it's going to be more modern than what's in here, I have the feeling. So, this here is uh, a motherboard from a HP or compact system. You can actually see the model of the board there. This was sent to me by accident from an eBay seller. And then they basically said, oh, just keep it. And what it is, is it's a entire motherboard with uh, the CPU included and it also came with a heatsink and fan which I've removed just for the, the purpose of applying new paste and showing you so it's got an i3540 on it which is the first generation of the Intel Core series it's got four DDR3 memory slots there's four SATA ports there you've got all array of various headers and things on it the back plate did come with it as you can see here on the back it's got DVI, VGA few USBs, it's even got Firewire there, which will actually come in handy because this has got a front Firewire port, which at the minute is connected to a Firewire card in the back. So I won't need that anymore. Uh, it's got a few PCI Express slots, space for a Wi-Fi card, etc. This here is an array of various DDR3 memory sticks. There's actually two pairs here, two kits. These are two gigabyte per module, so it's a total of eight gig with all the slots populated, which I'm going to be doing. This is the stock CPU heatsink fan that has been included with the motherboard. So that's going to be going on, hopefully, providing it fits. We may have to take this plastic shrouding off. And I'm going to be putting this Seagate 500GB random SATA hard drive in here. Anyway, let's get this uh, thing apart and have a look what hardware is actually in it. Okay, so here's a look at the all-in-one system itself first. You can see the screen is just sort of hinged onto it here. It's uh, This back bit is where the computer is. We've got down here, which you can't quite see, the DVD drive, and also a space for a floppy drive or card reader, whatever. There's CPU fan is here, I believe, and I think this, yeah, this is a case fan, basically, for exhaust. All your connections go on in there. The power supply's down here. There's not really much on that side. So if I drop this down, see a bit more there's the two fans all the wiring along the top now in here you can see this black cable which is the VGA video cable to the monitor and then we've also got this white cable which is the firewire cable to that port on the front that'll be going straight to the motherboard along with this VGA on the new system anyway I'm gonna get the back off this thing so we can see in it properly and uh, work out how we're gonna upgrade this thing okay so all four of the screws should be out now if we pull this casing up, we should be able to lift that off. And we've got the internal fan there that is pre-unplugged from when I've obviously looked at it previously. So, this thing's actually got a SATA hard drive in it, uh, surprisingly. It's a Maxta one as well. Uh, here's the power supply unit, which you can see. It's just got the input on this side here. That's that firewire cable that roots off down here and disappears to the front panel. I'm going to unplug the VGA as well whilst we're here. So, looking in here as well, on this sticker it actually does say the original specs for what this system will have been. Uh, it's currently got, I think it's a Celeron in it. But, um, it was an RM Expert 310. The motherboard was a D945GTP. The processor was a Presk 
64, which will be a Pentium 4 Prescott uh, 64-bit version at 3 GHz, and it had 1024 megs or 1 gig of RAM. So that was the original configuration. As I say, this board uh, I put in it temporarily a long time ago. That's why it's absolutely spotless. It had a brand new heatsink and fan. Uh, let's get this firewire card out first. We're just going to strip the whole thing down, take everything out, and then see how we're going to go ahead. There's this old uh, ID cable here from when it used to have an ID hard drive, but I changed it to SATA uh, previously. There's that firewire card. Uh, let's get these power supply connectors out of the way. Noticing that this motherboard's also got a bad capacitor here, which I'd want changing if I was going to use it. Uh, doubtful I will do, but... So that's all of the power supply mess to one side. This ID cable here, uh, I believe, goes down to the DVD drive and then back up to the hard drive. I think they're both on one cable, so that's what that'll be. Because there is only one SATA here, which goes straight over to this hard drive. So let's pull that out. We've got this header here, which will be for the front panel audio or USB. This will be the audio. Uh, this will be the USB one, and this here is the audio one. So those are both standard things. And we've also got the front panel power button, hard drive LED, power LED, etc. on here. It's quite a nice design because of it using all standard desktop PC parts. You can literally just change all the guts out more or less. You could even change this power supply to a, a better, more up-to-date, upgraded one, should you need to. In this case, we are really not going to need to because this is just going to be basic use as her first computer. We may revisit this and fit it with a graphics card and stuff in the future. I don't know for sure. Um, probably it will be a new build in another case, I would think, because it's probably going to be at least sort of two years' time when we come to do something like that. But that now should be all the screws out of the motherboard. And we're free to pull this thing out. So this is... Uh, a PM8M3-VH It's got standard DDR1 memory It's got a 24 pin power connector though and it's got uh, two SATAs on it Must be 775 with a, a seller on something or other on it I think Standard IO shield again Okay, now with all the old motherboard and everything out of the way, I'm now going to take this hard drive out because I believe it's a pain in the butt to do once the motherboard's in because the screws are here, which is uh, the only real downside to this, I guess. They could have really put the drive on some sort of a caddy, unless it is. Oh, actually, I think it is. I think that's just me. There's two screws here. There we go, and yes it is on a caddy, so that doesn't matter, you can uh, get out and change the drive at a later date, which is good. Anyway, now, uh, first thing I'm going to do before we start with this build is put this I.O. shield in, because we don't want to be forgetting about that, so that's all in place. Now, I'm going to drop the motherboard in, and then we can start loading it up again. I would normally put the CPU heatsink and memory and stuff on now, but it doesn't really matter and we've got plenty of access in this case. So, let's line those up. It's got this little centre uh, standoff here that doesn't have a screw in it that you can just push the board onto and it keeps it in position whilst you screw it in. So let's get the motherboard secured in now. Noticing as well, even though this is a deeper board, there are screw mounting points at the top here. So it's not just floating over the edge. The case does actually account for that, which is uh, pretty nice. 
I'm going to have to get some more screws, obviously, now. Because we've got two extra points to fix. Okay, and we're back with two screws that match the existing screws from the case. Because, God forbid, I put in screws with a different head. Not only would it bother me, but I would never hear the end of it in the comments. But, uh, yeah, not to worry. We've got these in now. One thing I'm noticing at this point as well is... Uh, we're probably not going to have a disk drive in this system unless I upgrade it to SATA. I don't think I'm really going to bother because obviously this board hasn't got IDE connectivity. So this thing's just going to flop around loose somewhere in the back. We'll uh, think about that later on. Let me have a quick look at that. I think we're going to have to take this shroud piece off to fit it. I've not screwed that down obviously but I'm just going to test fit this back cover. And, yep, yeah, we are highly... Yep, yeah, we're going to have to take that off. There's no way. So, let's do that right now. Luckily, it's just on clips, so you can see them here. So, we'll get that off. Like so, it's just a little waveguide thing. Must have been something for the HP case previously. So, yeah, that's... Uh, give us a bit of... Reduced height, and we should be able to put the back on now. Here comes the Uber syringe of cheapo thermal compound. It works absolutely fine for uh, basic builds like this. Performance isn't be all and end all, as long as it works. Uh, so yeah, if you're building a decent system, I'd recommend maybe spending a few quid on decent paste. This was next to nothing for loads, and I, I just use it for testing most of the time. So um, heat sink fan we're going to put on that way all this needs uh, either a big flat blade or a uh, allen key type head or a torx head not to worry I've got a nice big flat bladed screwdriver here so we're going to use that HP and Compaqa always wants to use the sort of allen key screws they never seem to use standard Phillips screws but at least this has got the flat head through the middle of it as well Two diagonal corners here. Look at this. Okay, there we go. It's nice and secure, paste in place. Let's plug that in. And now I think we're gonna fit some fit some memory. Yeah, let's fit the memory. So I've got four sticks of memory here to go in. We go in that way. And I'm going to install the matched sticks in the match slots. Like so. I may as well use these up because there's not much use for two gigabyte modules of DDR3. So she's now got eight gigs of RAM in uh, the cheapest possible arrangement, really. Right, let's get some front panel connectors hooked up, I think, because we've got this spaghetti mess down here. And uh, I'm going to start off with probably the front panel uh, power switches and stuff, of which I don't know which way around they go on this board. I think they go to here. Okay, so if you look down here on the board, you can see JFP1, which is usually front panel 1, uh, connectors on a board. And there's no markings on them for what goes where. So we've got to guess where power LED, hard drive, LED and power switch go. This is usually a pretty standard arrangement though. You tend to find that the LEDs are furthest away from this missing pin, so on this side here. And power LED is usually on the row with the missing pin and a power switch is usually this one here so let's just guess that's power switch also these usually go with the right in facing down away from the CPU that's hard drive LED which is usually here and this is power LED which is usually here we're not really going to cause any damage by connecting these up wrong worst case scenario is the LED lights won't work or it won't turn on and then we'll just come back in here and sort these out maybe even look online for a motherboard manual 
if one is available. That's the issue that you tend to have when you're dealing with OEM boards like HP and Dell and Compaq and Lenovo. They're uh, usually odd layouts or don't tell you what's what. Anyhow, there's the front panel hooked up. We've got here JUSB 2, which is USB 2.0 second set. We've got JUSB 1, which is USB 2.0 the first set. Uh, this is going to be some sort of other headers, we've got a Firewire header here, we've got a audio header here, so this is where we're going to put our audio onto, which is the one with the pin in the middle that's missing. So I'm going to drop that onto here, like that, and that'll be kind of rooted out the way somewhere. Then I'm going to plug in the USB header, which is this one. And we're going to try and put it on USB 1, but yeah, there we go. So that's those two out of the way. I'm just going to try and tuck them under the edge of the board a little bit to clean things up. That takes care of a lot of the front panel spaghetti mess for now. Uh, we've got the power cables here from the power supply as well to go in. I may do those... Yeah, I'm going to do those now. So, four pin for the CPU, which goes to there. These are just going to have to sort of sit in this space where the PCI Express slots are, but we aren't using them, so it doesn't matter. Because there's a fan about here that they are going to have to avoid, and that's where the hard drive goes as well. So, but I'm also going to have to get a Molex to SATA converter because this power supply is uh, our Molex. It's a time before SATA was mainstream, I guess. So, we've also got this only a 20 pin uh, power supply connector. So, you can see that these four are empty. That entirely should not matter. It should still work perfectly fine without those extra four pins. But I have got an uh, adapter to go from a 20 pin to a 20 plus 4 pin if I need it. Usually you'll find they'll work fine without it though, in more standard system cases. The board that I took out of it was actually a 24 pin, and it only had this in it. Righty ho, with those kind of tucked out of the way now, let's look at getting the uh, hard drive hooked up. So this is SATA 4, 3, 2, 1. The blue is number 1. Naturally it's uh, where well, we can't really get to it. I mean I'm going to try and plug this in. I should have uh, thought ahead and plug this in before we put the board in and then there won't have been a problem. I don't think I'm going to get it now. Nope. Okay. Not really a problem. I'm just going to use SATA 3 instead that's there. And uh, that same SATA cable will do just fine. This IDE cable I'm now going to tuck along here out of the way as well. I'm going to try and post it down there somewhere. And the other end of it can just sort of stay tucked in up here. Let's change out this hard drive and uh, I'll get a Molex to SATA power converter now as well for it. And then we can try this thing. So here we go, we're nearing completion. I've got the hard drive here mounted to the caddy. I've got a Molex to SATA, albeit a bit overkill. I only really needed a single one, but this is all I've got to hand. And I don't really use these things anymore, so... This can go in here, like so. And we're going to have this slot into place. Should hopefully clear all of these cables. Perfect. Got them two screws from before. There's the power cable in. The data cable in. Let's put that out of the way. And then I'm going to bring this back around. And plug into this Molex here for power to the hard drive and we've got one more screw left over which I didn't put back in before it comes out of the PCI slot I haven't got a blank plate for this but uh, realistically it doesn't matter it's up in the back under the PC so I would have liked to put one in but I don't have any that size so here we go to the back panel VGA is first that's going into there Perfect, and then we're going to put the firewire into this firewire port, like so, and that is us done. 
Now, before I put the back on, I'm going to try this thing because it's bad luck to put a full computer together and then turn the power on. The chances are you're going to have forgot something and need to go back into it. So I always recommend you try them before you put the back on or the side on or whatever. Okay, so I've got my trusty keyboard here hooked up. The power is connected. I just need to turn this thing on. And then now we see if it works. So it's powering up. The power light is on. So we've wired them right from the looks of it. We've got no signal at the moment on the monitor. Is that about to show? Oh, yeah, I saw a HP splash green for a split second there. Oh, we've got an error. System fan has failed. Service PC to prevent damage to the system. F2 to continue. That just means uh, there's no fan on the secondary system fan header, but there will be when we put the back on anyway. Default BIOS settings were loaded. That's fine. Let's restart this thing. And I'm going to go with F2 for the BIOS. Okay, so uh, after pressing the F2, you then have to continue pressing F10 really quickly to get into the BIOS. Looks like the time and date and everything's been reset. It may need a new BIOS battery. Not a problem, because I'm well stocked with those. But, um, yeah, so we can see third drive is the hard drive in this case. We've got 8GB of DDR3 detected here. You can probably see that better now. 4x2GB, um, which is very nice. This BIOS is the 11th of the 5th, 2010, or the 5th of the 11th, whichever way, whether it's American or UK, don't know. So, uh, it's like almost 10 years old now, this system, but meh, it's going to do uh, totally fine. So, it was from a HP Pro 3130 small form factor PC, there's all the original information from the system this board came out of. As I say, I paid nothing for it, so... But anyway, we've got a Core i3 CPU, an i3 540 at 3.07 GHz, more than enough for anything she's going to need. And in the future, I can also drop in an i5 or an i7 into this board if more is needed. SATA is enabled and set to AHCI. Onboard memory is enabled to 128 MB, yeah, that's fine. Firewire is enabled. Let's disable boot from LAN because we're never going to use that. I'm just going to go through the BIOS and set up everything that needs to be set up properly and uh, then I'll get Windows installing on this thing. Okay so fast forward a bit and we're in Windows. As you can see it's all up and running. Windows 10 is installed. If we look under here we can see that we're rocking Windows 10 Pro. We've got a Core i3 540 at 3.07 GHz, 8 gigs of RAM 7.68 gigabytes usable because it's allocated 256 whatever for the graphics. You can also see here the two cores and four threads in Task Manager. The 8 gigs of RAM there with uh, 6 gigabytes of it sitting idle. So yeah, that's good. I've uh, done a few updates. I've installed Firefox and just a free version of Avast Antivirus. And uh, trimmed down a lot of the junk that comes pre-installed with Windows 10. So I got rid of all the crap off the start menu got rid of all the candy crush and all that junk that comes down automatically and uh, did a few updates so now we can put the back back on this thing so here's our RM back panel with that fan I think this is like a 92 millimeter fan something like that it's got the three pin connector on it and this motherboard has got the three pin connector there near the CPU power we'll just plug that in tuck it down line up this cover so there we go the back panel is reattached that fan should now work there's only one way to find out let's stand it up connect everything up again which is now going to be a little bit harder because obviously you've got to reach in there but not too bad I don't actually have a back panel flap these would have a flap here with a little hole where all the cables go through uh, doesn't really matter didn't come to me with one and uh, I've not really missed it so, let's plug in, and you'll also notice the uh, front panel wiring is all correct. There's the hard drive light, the power light, the power button works. And in a second the screen will come on, there we go. Oh, 
Oh, default bow settings have been loaded because of the battery must be dead in it. I forgot to put a new battery in. I will go and do that now. So there we go. Everything is fully finished now. I've just changed the BIOS battery as well, so all's good to go. The fan is running on the back. It's super quiet. You can just about hear the hard drive. And it runs really quickly. Like It's, it's impressive how fast this thing actually is for a pile of junk that I had hanging around, basically more or less junk you know it's as i say a lot of them bits probably wouldn't have gone into use for anything for myself so you know these things work okay the only thing that lets it down is the fact it's not got an ssd so things like opening a program initially like the internet takes a, a few seconds but then once it's going you can actually navigate pretty quickly like pages load decently fast and uh, yeah i think she'll be happy with this Anyway, if you uh, enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below. Any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments section down below. And if you're interested in more random technological uh, computer videos, electrical, whatever, uh, please subscribe to my channel because I make random videos on stuff that just inspires me to make a video there and then. Thanks for watching.